listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. Man, we have an amazing show lineup for y'all. We have our special guest, snowboard gold medalist, not once, two times. The one and only Lindsley Jacob Bellis. She's joining us this morning talking about her amazing book, Unforgiving Lessons from the Fall. First and foremost, thank you for your time. Lindsay, how are you doing? Doing so great. Thank you so much for having me on here today. So tell us about this new book. It came out recently. People can get it right now on Amazon or anywhere you can get books in the store. Tell us what inspired you to make the decision. It's time to tell the story. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy you touched upon that because about a year ago, pretty actually pretty short after I won uh, my gold in Beijing, uh, did I think that this would be, you know, finally the time to tell my story from my narrative and to be able to share my experiences. I wanted to inspire and give hope for anyone that was having a hard time uh, getting through something or working through a mistake in their life. Uh, I definitely made a big mistake when I was 20 years old in 2006 and it stuck with me and defined me for so long. And I, I have so many different moments of me growing up and having to evolve as I went through each Olympic cycle, but uh, how I had to ultimately forgive myself to really set up the moment to give me the possibility of winning gold in 2022. So take us to that moment in 2006 Olympics. What was your emotions like and how did you just keep yourself calm even though it was chaotic? So... After I fell, I had no idea why I did that. And I was still trying to process that myself. That's definitely not something that I normally did. It's definitely not a part of my normal race mentality. So when I got down to the bottom and I was trying to understand it, it, the media had already assigned, you know, what had happened and what I had done which I felt was so harsh because as a young person in general, you don't feel like you have that much of a voice to begin with. It takes you a while to find your strength and your voice and be standing up for yourself. And I did not have it then. So having to then just be sent through the media zone and to be asked that same question over and over again when I was desperately trying to understand what had happened myself was really hard. So it was, it became a moment that how I was defining myself was ultimately not even of my own choosing, yet that's what stuck with me. And it was a long time until I decided that I needed to change that because that was not healthy for me. And that was not healthy for my personal development as an individual or an athlete to, you know, continue along that path. So in 2016 was actually when I started to look at that because I'd still be having success in my sport and winning and then Olympic cycle would come up and I just kind of miss out and not understanding why this wasn't coming together for me. So I had to look outside the box and try to see, you know, what am I missing? I am training hard on and off the snow. What am I missing? So this was the only thing I hadn't exhausted. And so that's why I decided, you know, maybe I have to look at this from a new angle and see what I can, you know, learn from this new experience. We're talking to Lindsay Jacob Bellison about her book, Unforgiving Lessons from the Fall. Like you mentioned earlier, you came back 2022 Winter Olympics. What was going through your mind during those uh, events and understanding that, okay, we don't want to let that one thing happen again? How did you look at that? Well, ultimately, I call my book Unforgiving because I felt the media was unforgiving to me. And then and most of the time, it was myself being unforgiving to my own self-image and how I viewed how I was an athlete and how I was going through these motions. And very different 
uh, mindset in 2022 compared to 2006. In 2006, I was destined to win. I was, I was America's favorite to win in this sport, the new sport that was coming in. And then winning became the only option. And going into 2022, it would, my mindset was, wouldn't it be amazing if I got a medal and I'm just going to take one step at a time, one heat at a time and just slowly chip away. And if it's going to be my day, it's going to be my day. And if not, it's just not, and I will be okay. And that is such a huge, you know, polar opposite swing to what I had going into 2006. So even just in that phrase, in that realization, that is so much healthier to be viewing yourself. And that's so hard. And that's so hard for athletes because they are so divined by their actions and what they do. And I'm a snowboarder ultimately, but I'm also a, a person. And so many people forget that athletes are human beings that can make mistakes. And that does not mean that that is who they are. So this was also supposed to be a book that would open up the eyes and be um, educating people to look a little deeper into those individuals and then also to give that glimmer of hope and inspiration to anyone that was struggling and trying to get through their challenging moments. Every athlete has their ups and downs, but a true elite athlete like yourself always come back. I mean, you look at the facts, two-time Olympic gold medalist, one-time Olympic uh, silver medalist, six-time world champion, 10-time S Games gold medalist. The list goes on and on. Having that mindset to be determined to always be bounce back, even throw life throws limits at you, you make lemonade. (laughs) What is your message to young athletes out there, especially uh, women athletes who have the opportunity to break barriers? I, I think it's incredible that there's so many women out there raising the bar in every sport. And it was really special that I was a part of the growth in my sport. So talking to any other athlete out there, you know, really understand who you are as a person outside of your sport and make sure that you are loving your sport because there were so many times I didn't understand if I was loving my sport, if I was doing it because I was the best at it. But every time I would look inward, I did love my sport. So it was worth fighting for and it was worth fighting through these really, really hard times to get that growth and to get that final moment in Beijing. From disappointment to triumph, when you look at what you were able to endure from people who can't even control your destiny, how would you formulate the message to athletes out there who want to be elite and dominate in their in their own sport? I mean, that's that's a really great question, but it's also a really hard question because when you are searching for that elite level, so much of it is in the right time and in the right moment and how things line up for you. And you could still be one of the best athletes out there, but it just doesn't line up for you. And that's so hard. And that was what I was struggling with for a long time through four Olympic cycles. And at the end of the day, it doesn't define you and who you are. Uh, doing athletics is, is incredible. It teaches you team bonding. It teaches you teaches you growth and discipline, but ultimately you have to be coming out with that mindset that you are an individual outside of your sport and that you have to be the complete person. And for the longest time, I didn't feel like I was the complete person. I was just the athlete, but now I'm happy to feel like a complete person and have that growth and have that, that fortitude to feel I can accomplish anything that I put my mind to. Once again, talking to Lindsay Jacob Bellis and her book, Unforgiving Lessons from the Fall. You can get the book right now. I want to say not too many times get to wake up and talk to someone with your stature. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me.